Ah, uh, so I'm young spray, born and raised in Dominica. Um, it's a little tiny island, not that tiny compared to all the other islands, but it's classed as a small island in the Caribbean, in between Guadeloupe and Martinique. Um, yeah, population of around seventy thousand. Um, I just remember happy, like happy times, you know, the beach, sun every day. Um, going up and down with my dad, um, you know, and he was well respected where we come from. So, you know, just little things. Um, my mom, um, school, everything was different over there. I was a smart kid, so like I was going to school with um, kids a couple years older than me and all that. So, yeah, it was different, it was nice. Well, it wasn't really, to me, it didn't seem like hardship because I was a child, I was growing up, it was all fun to me. And to be fair, um, my dad was like the finance minister, his best friend, who I used to call my uncle, he was like the prime minister. So growing up in Dominica, like we had a maid in that when I lived at my dad's house. So the only hardship I ever encountered probably was when my dad and my mum broke up and then we had to move to, um, we moved to housing scheme, which is like um, council housing basically, but it still wasn't like hardship because I could just go and meet my dad. So, yeah. Coming to, coming to UK as a boy, I remember it was a mixture of feelings. I was um, sad and excited. I was sad to leave my island, but as a kid, I didn't think to myself, oh, yeah, I'm never going to come back. So that wasn't really too much of a big deal. I was excited to come to England because I've only seen England on the TV. I've never seen snow before in my life. So I was excited to come and see the snow and that. Obviously, when I got here, little things I had to overcome, like my accent, you get me? Because obviously I used to speak like, I used to speak like a Dominican, you get me? So when I come to England, I was talking like this, so when I when I go to school, I used to talk like this, so everybody used to just laugh at me. So that was something I had to overcome. You get me? Like before, like a couple months later, I was saying in it, all of that trying to just blend in. But yeah, so yeah, it was different. You get me? It was a cultural difference. I never seen so much white people in my life. Do you get what I'm saying? So when I come here, it was like rock. Like do you get what I'm saying? Because where I'm born or where I'm what I'm used to is the black people is the majority. So it's like when I come here, we was the minority and on top of that, where I come from, I was like upper class. When I came here, I was like, just no one in it, like in their eyes, do you know what I'm saying? To me, I didn't see it like there was an actual turning point, um, like, a, like, yeah, there's one turning point. It's like different circumstances, different things led up to that. Do you get what I'm trying to say? To begin with, like my mum and dad breaking up, that was a turning point because that put me on a different path. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Then moving to England, that was another turning point because that put me on a different path. But um, So like basically it was just boredom because my mum, when we came here, she had five kids, I was the youngest. So she was a teacher as well. So she didn't have time to just keep her eye on all of us. And I could come home and act good or whatever, but when I used to be on road or whatever, I was a mischievous youth. So um, just basically who I bumped into, who I used to hang around with, because um, I live in Wolf, I used to live in Walthamstow at the top of the um, estate primary court. So I used to go there and play basketball a lot. Um, people I used to bump into, um, you know, like the friends I made. We just like doing um, naughty stuff, you know? So it started with just naughtiness, like, you know, little burglaries, little bits and pieces or whatever. And I went prison young, so that's another turning point. I went prison when I was 16 for a crime like I committed when I was like 15 or something. So it's like, that was a turning point then. Cause it's like from there, as a, as a child, I just thought, well, what else is there? Do you get what I'm trying to say? Obviously leading up to that, I'd already been on road to be able to get to prison, but that's just like little bits and pieces in it. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Robberies, blah, 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 but which I shouldn't have been doing, granted, but what I'm trying to say is, as, as a big man looking now, I would say, right, that you might have possibly been able to be saved. Do you get what I'm trying to say? But they threw the book at me, and so that might have been a turning point. Well, to be fair, my, my nan, 
Grand Dame was a turning point as well. Because after that, I just thought, I don't care about a lot. And we're all going to die anyway, so, you know, that's it. And if anyone plays with me, they're going to die and blah, blah, blah. I was like, having a different um, mentality at that time in my life. So, yeah. Just linking, bucking certain people. I liked to be bad. I liked, um, I liked Mischief to be naughty. Do you get what I'm trying to say? It wasn't something to me as a big man. I don't look at it and think, "Right, you was forced to do that," because I don't feel like I was forced to do it. It's easy to say that, like, "Oh yeah, you know, poverty," and I was forced to do it. It's easy to say that because we wasn't the richest people, single parent. But my mum would try her hardest. She, do you get what I'm saying? She buy what I needed, but that wasn't enough. Do you get what I'm saying? I needed the Armani, I wanted the um, whatnot. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So that's why I would go and look to do crime to make money to be able to get them things that my mum couldn't afford. Do you get what I'm trying to say? But it's not like she couldn't afford it to the point where I was looking like a tramp. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Where I had to do that. It's just what I aspired to, what I aspired to be at that time and the type of people I would look up to and whatnot. Do you get what I'm trying to say? It wasn't a turning point in a sense where I didn't wake up and think, oh yeah, today I'm going to be bad. Because you've got some people, I don't know if that's how it seems to me. It's like, right, but you wasn't bad. Um, you wasn't bad yesterday or the day before. So it's like some people wake up. So it's like, it wasn't like that. It was more circumstances that led me to that. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So. Like I said, growing up, I found it, I didn't mind um, being bad or naughty. All my friends or the people I knew or looked up to, they'd been to Felton, which is the place that I knew that I was going to end up going anyway. And um, basically coming into court, I'd already known that there was a strong possibility of us getting reminded because it was, um, it was pleas and D's. I remember it was pleas and D's and we was going to, she's going to um, take you on the chin, just go guilty and try and get the mitigation, try and get um, I think we're trying to get something but not custodial, you get me? Trying to get something, they were saying that um, we could get but um, so we're guilty but they said um, yeah there's a possibility when you go guilty you get remanded because um, three weeks, we're going to come back in three weeks for sentencing yeah for um, pre-sentence report but this is what this guy said but for a pre-sentence report but it's 100% a custodial, that's what he said he said, you're definitely getting a custodian. So it's like, bear in mind, I'd already gone there thinking like, you know, I prepared for jail. I had like, I had like a 20 pound drawer in my bottom, yeah? It was cheats, because I don't bank, yeah? But I was trying to bank, but a little tip of it, a little tip of it went in, yeah? Anyway, so boom, so I had that, I had little things ready. So it's like, he said that, and then he said, so I'm giving you bail. I looked at my code, I was like, you're giving me custodian and he was like i was ready to go to jail so it's like i said to the judge like an idiot yeah looking back i was like but you're giving me custodial anyway so why are you giving me bail me like an idiot i've said so he said all right cool remind you get what i'm saying <laughs> said he's good remind my cody looked at me like all right bro i'm safe you get what i'm saying and my cody took his bail in it took his bail for a few weeks so that like, that was a bit silly but anyway so i got reminded like that like i got bail and then he just reminded me because i was just changing about like, yeah um, so yeah he's reminded me and my Cody got bail. So the first night, I was like, I didn't really, to be fair, at that time, it was just something I didn't really, I was young, I didn't care like that. Because I was smart enough to know that they're going to have to open up them gates. And I wasn't, in my head, I wasn't thinking I was looking a long time. I didn't know they was going to give me two years. I thought maybe six months or something. So it's like, and I know people had been to this place, felt them. Um, that I know, do you get what I'm trying to say? So it wasn't a thing that I think, rah, I can't be all right in it because I know people that's been all right in it. So, um, yeah, but it was more intriguing, I would say, at that age. Do you get what I'm saying? I wasn't scared. I wasn't, um, do you get what I'm saying? I was more intrigued, you know? The first night in jail, yeah, if I could speak to that young boy now, yeah. I'd say, don't use the blank, don't use the green blankets. That's the first thing I say, don't use them green blankets because you see, that's what I done, I used them in green blankets. You get what I'm saying? I had a rash within about two days, so I'll definitely tell him that. And you know, the, the, I, I think I dealt with prison okay, to be fair, as a kid. So it's not like I, would, I wouldn't have to give that little boy so much of a pet talk because he was pet, he was already, he was, he was 
So yeah, that was it. If, to be fair, prison's prison. You know, you've got four walls, you've got a toilet, you've got a sink. So, as far as like, that sense, it doesn't change. So, and I went as a road guy before, and even as a rapper, I was still a road guy. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So, as far as that can, as, like, I was already schooled in that sense. The only difference is now, you've got people that know what I look like, I don't know what they look like, so I could walk past and get into something without me even, do you get what I'm trying to say? I might move to me and we're in something, but, um, yeah, obviously more people know you. Um, I'll be walking down the landing and hear my tunes pumping and all that, you know, like, you know, you get the screws even, obviously, you get all of that, like the screws even deal with you different, so yeah. But that's about it, but prisons are still prison. You know, you still gotta keep your guard up. I wasn't a guy that was in prison before, as a kid, that didn't have to keep his guard up, that didn't have to, you know what I mean, put my dukes up, so it was, to me, it was just, all the same but just a little bit more on in it because you got man that knows what I look like because of the whole TV thing and I don't know what they look like so that was it really. Dear yeah, obviously like it made me feel when I when I used to go go back to jail or whatever and I would hear man beating my tunes on the landing or my own come up to me like oh, young spade da, 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 da. you got me through um so much time and blah 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 it made me feel good you know so these are the sort of things why I even kept doing music because Obviously, at, at certain times, I, I didn't feel I was getting the love what I deserved from, like, say, the industry. But what would keep me going is I would still get the love from the real Gs, you know? Like, the real Gs always kept, like, they'll come out of jail and they'll be like, yeah, spray, or da 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 da, -da. You know what? Respect, blood. They'll DM me. Um, respect, blood. You've got me through my sentence and blah, 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 and keep going and whatnot. So, yeah, you know, it's always love, like, to hear my tunes on the landing and whatnot. You get me? As far as North Star, the reason we were so we got so notorious um, in music is because we was notorious on road type of thing. Everyone involved in North Star was um, quite well known on road, you know. So it's like we knew a lot of people North, East, South, West, and rude ways. So it's like it's not like now where you've got the um youtube and you've got social network and all that um we literally had to go and print up our cds so we printed up our cds i remember we done not guilty volume one me and c so and i remember we printed up them cds and literally we went everywhere you know like northwest press road big up the press road um south um lewisham West, North, everywhere we flooded it. But it's like, we flooded it to the real niggas. So it's like, everyone always follows the real niggas. So it's like, we had the real niggas supporting us in it and playing us in the um, CD. So then the girls they're rolling with will be like, oh, dude. So now, and you know girls bust you in it. So like, when girls are looking at it, right, two face man, cause you got me, you got a seat in it. So you got two face man, whoa. And they're about this thing. So it's like, it went crazy. Yeah, so like the girl then bust us as well. Cause that, we, we got a lot of, um, love from the gallery still um, so yeah that was just basically it just um natural and you know just linking people and everyone everyone knew our story they felt our story do you get what I'm trying to say it wasn't a story that wasn't known do you get what I'm trying to say so yeah well basically obviously um, C Clint I met Clint in prison in um, only when I was 16, when I was, uh, I met him on that first um, on that first sentence, and then later on in life, when we was chatting, we always kept the link. We was chatting, and I think when I came out the last time, he was like, "Yeah, he's doing this music thing." Blah blah blah. But um, uh, sorry, I, I must have been spitting some thing to um, my friend in a car one time to um, Taylor in a car one time and then he was like, right, you're sick, blah, blah, blah. So then yeah, I'm trying to say, so it wasn't a case of me inheriting beef, I was just doing music, but no one's gonna take me for a dickhead where I'm going. And that was that, do you get what I'm trying to say? So it wasn't a case of that. 
it was a case of defending my friends. It's the Queen's land. I'm not going to defend their area. I'll rep my area. I'll rep my ends all day long. I'll rep Wolfenstone, rep Tottenham. Where I go, I represent that, that, them areas. But I'm not going to defend them areas. I don't belong to the British Army. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So, and it's the Queen's end. So I'm not going to defend that area. I'm originally from Dominica. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So if it goes down and they need me over there to defend over there, yeah, I'll go and defend that land. Do you understand? But that's to the outsiders. I have, I've got no say over what the outside is. I don't care about what people are looking and thinking. I can just deal with what I'm dealing with. You get what I'm trying to say? Because as far as even the whole Hackney Tottenham thing, that was played out as a Hackney Tottenham beef. It was never a Hackney Tottenham beef. Yeah. Do you get what? It was people from Hackney beefing with people from Tottenham. Yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So it was never a Tottenham Hackney beef. I knew that. Do you get what I'm trying to say? But real niggas knew that. But to the streets, it might have seemed like, yeah, Hackney, Tottenham, because you've got certain people in Hackney, they think, well, I'm not going to Tottenham. So if you thought, oh, I'm not going to Hackney, because that's just how it goes. Do you get what I'm trying to say? You see, even with the kids now, the award show, yeah, but after four, obviously, obviously at first, total straight revenge, obviously, I'm angry, I'm mad. So that was my afterthought. But um, then obviously, with me, because I always look at the bright side of things, alhamdulillah. My, um, my religion allows me to do this. So um, anything that reaches me, whether it be good or bad, like, I just feel like it's supposed to be. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Even if it's bad, it's good for me. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So it's like a story. So with all the stuff what I've been through, things I've done um, in the past um, that I might not be proud of or whatever, like that's nothing so it's like i had to look at that as okay what do i take out of this so now i've taken out okay who's really for me who's really my friend who's really up for what they think what i think i'm up for do you get what i'm trying to say like who's real who's fake who's do you get what i'm trying to say there's a lot of things that um that situation helped me out in as far as life it brought me closer to um to my god brought me more um made me more religious so um yeah so my afterthought was, and as far as like the industry concerned, I just thought, rah, so is that, is that how much, um, is that how, much, how they feel about man, really, do you get what I'm trying to say? Because I put a lot in, I put a lot in this industry from the start, as far as like UK gangster rap or whatever. If you was there, then you know, um, basically, because 2007 was when Really The Most One came out and, um, that was all over the place. That was in everyone's um, everyone's car, banging out all the rude boys. So you can't erase history. North Star, On A Rise, um, Love Like This. Like These were big um, hits of, at the time. Do you get what I'm trying to say? But I see now when they do their little uh, UK rap um, industry, the, um, this is how it was built. I see they like to skip out North Star or they'll skip out Young Spirit. I see all these other little guys talking like they built this thing. And, to me, I just look and I just think, rah, is that what? Is that how you look really, you look gonna lie to yourselves like that? Is that how much you look are intimidated, yeah? Or just hate, demand them, do you get what I'm trying to say? And that just stems from how locked we had the whole streets, do you get what I'm trying to say? See all these chiefs, they're chiefs really, I'm trying to say, and understanding that, right, these guys are really, they must be extremely intimidated by a man or whatever to even move like that, cause it's like, or scared forevermore. Um, Cause it's like it's a situation where why would you choose why why wouldn't you just be partial? Like it, it became obvious that people was like following a bandwagon, you know. And I just thought, right, like, um, obviously. But the good thing about it is it showed me the people that actually, you know, the people that kept that are real, you know, that kept it, you know, like and I got a couple men um, like that that still stayed down and whatnot. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So. To be honest, I've been doing music so long that I'm used to it, you know, like I'm actually used to it. This was happening from, you know, North Star days, like this is, from you've, give, you've given yourself that, you put yourself on a platform, you've made people able to just say what they really want to say now, because you won't know it's them, innit? Like you never know who written that comment, enough of them comments, you wouldn't even know. Could be the man that spudded you, that, you get what I'm saying? Yesterday evening he spudded you, he's gone on TV, he's pretty fucking naked, do you get what I'm saying? Um, but as far as I'm concerned, with the comments and that, I never, it, it doesn't 
really obviously it annoys me because that's human nature yeah but to me it doesn't do nothing to me because i just think i know real niggas ain't doing that so well i hope not but furthermore i know not because you wouldn't be real if that's what you're doing so i know real niggas ain't doing that so it's like these are just the people i was talking about the chief people like i said it's a chief you world so it's like because even me i wouldn't see something and think i want to leave a mad comment if i if i think to leave a comment it would be a good comment I see something, I think, ah, oh, that's shit, yeah? I would say it's shit, but I won't, ah, oh, that's shit, yeah, shit. You get what I'm trying to say? So them people, they got a problem with themselves. Do you get what I'm saying? That they need to work out. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So that doesn't really affect me, you know? It affected me, but obviously there was so much going on at the time, but it affected me clearly. Because obviously, like, how can your mum die and it don't affect you? That would be crazy. But um, my dad died the previous year. So it's like, I'd lost, my, I'd lost my dad. So then, and I went to my dad's funeral with my mum. And I even thought, like, it, she, it just felt like she wanted to be with dude anyway. So it's like, okay, cool, lost my mum to cancer. Like I said, with my religion, I just feel like... Um, what what's meant to be will be in it. Allah knows best. So it's like she wasn't she wasn't in her she wasn't a young woman. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So go and rest, mommy. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like I'm just glad she she didn't end up all because how my mommy she, she wants to be able to move and rave and she didn't end up having to be like do you get what I'm trying to say? Not be able to move or she did she enjoyed her life all the way through. Do you get what I'm saying? So okay, cool. You know. So. Um, yeah, that's how I look at things really, it's like, um, you know, with every hardship comes ease, you know, so I just look at it like, it's like, okay, my mum died, but I survived, do you get what I'm trying to say? So, that could have, do you know what I mean, that could have been the, the energy, do you know what I'm saying, like, she could, it's just one of them things, isn't it? what Allah wills, he wills, because I could have died that day, easily, I could have died a lot of times, but I didn't, do you get what I'm trying to say, that was my mum's time to die, do you get what I'm trying to say, so, that's and the weird thing about it is I prepare for I prepare for things. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I'm I'm able, alhamdulillah, I've got a strong mind and I'm able to prepare for things. So it's like I knew my mum was getting on, like and in the back of my head I kinda prepared for it. Not prepared for it, like it sounds nuts, you get me preparing for your mum dying or whatever. But it's like I've already uh, what's gonna happen if I if my mum dies? Or what's gonna happen if I'm a man like that? Do you get what I'm trying to say? What's gonna So it's like okay, cool. My mom died, but I've still got a family. Do you get what I'm saying? That I've got a kid for, I've got, do you get what I'm trying to say? I've got, you know what I mean? So it's like, and it's the circle of life. I had to be there when my mom lost her mom. I was there, do you get what I'm saying? And saw my mom cry. So I know the circle of life. Do you get what I'm saying? She lost her dad. That's just what happens. And it's better, how I looked at it, it's better I lose my mom than my mom lose me to these dirty streets because there's so many times my mom crying in her, like she thought she might lose me to these dirty streets and guess what my mom didn't have to bury me you know enough man mom had to bury them so that's another thing what kind of helped me um get through that situation you know well i bought i've i, I turned muslim in 2000 alhamdulillah yeah not for the greatest reasons to be fair i was in woodhill I was in Woodhill in um, Luton and at the time it was Ramadan and they was giving out some kebab, some mad food in the, in the um, evening yeah. and my soulmate was a um, Muslim so it's like it's like nah I need to get on this thing you get what I'm saying I need some of that food so I stopped for that but that's how I initially turned Muslim yeah. so then boom once you've done that you have to go Friday prayers you have to so it's like so so then obviously I got into it started learning it and then I realized oh my days like this is a lot of what's in the Quran you wouldn't know is in the Bible do you get what I'm trying to say so I realized oh my days like nothing and it, it was like a real you know so then I, I learned how to do a zana. I was doing a zana. Yeah. in Woodhill I, 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 was, I was on it proper but it's like when I came back out I kind of didn't really do you get what I'm trying to say but my mom's Catholic everyone so it's like came back out within a couple of weeks I'm on a sausage and egg McMuffin do you get what I'm trying to say I'm being nuts do you get what I'm saying a star follow so it's like I kind of wavered you know got back on like but I've always been religious you know so even when I wavered I'll be beating Psalms 
Do you get what I'm trying to say? I was a, I was a man like that. Like when I wavered, I'd still be beating Psalms because I was always trying to draw for that higher energy. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So it's like that. So then obviously, then I got back in, into Cologne, you know, and um, like I've, I've always, like El Fatih, I've always known El Fatih. Like there's, there's things I've learned and I've always known like, little things or if I sneeze, alhamdulillah, I'll, it's always been around me, you know, I've always kept it in mind, you know, I've always kept my faith in mind, I've always kept God close and God's kept, kept me close. So, um, yeah, so that's how I um, turned Muslim and then when I looked into it and everything, alhamdulillah, everything made sense and um, yeah, recently I've been drawn closer to it on the strength of you saved me again. Like, you know what I'm saying? I died twice, innit? So it's like, right, you saved me again. Okay, I have to show, to me, I have to show that level of gratefulness to get to that. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Because it's like, what I mean, do you know? So I went to um, went to visit my friend, my good friend, Ibs in, in Gambia, you know, went for a little spiritual journey, got back, um, you know, built, built, built back my mom and, um, you know, and even this year, um, with the brothers, done like my first proper Ramadan, you know. Alhamdulillah, look, I would, like you've never seen me with a beard. You get what I'm trying to say? I don't, I don't know what's going on. Look how old I am, and I'm now getting a beard. I done my first Ramadan. All of a sudden, beard start growing. You get me? Alhamdulillah. Um, like I say, that's what helps me. That's what pulls me through. Cause it's like anything that happens to me, I have to just believe it's good for me. Do you get what I'm trying to say? It's good for me. With hardship comes ease. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And what I would like to leave the um, youth with that is to be inspired you know whatever happens to you don't let it hold you down don't let it bring you down you know believe that it was there was a good there's a, there's a good gonna come from this do you get what i'm trying to say there's good gonna come from this you know like and that goes with anything you know whatever you whatever goes wrong just look at what what, what good can come come out of it you know like and remember as far as like my mom died like, we're all gonna die like me you everyone in here right now you get, in a hundred years, we're all dead, you know that? Everyone, do you get what I'm saying? Give it a hundred years, everyone here, we're gone. So, to me, I don't, do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, I'm a man, I don't, I ex like, I welcome death. Do you get what I'm trying to say? It sounds nuts, I welcome it. But I'm not, I'm not afraid of it. I'm not, do you get what I'm trying to say? I'm not afraid of it. There's a lot of people waiting for us. Well, wait for me, where, where, you get what I'm trying to say? So it's like, but at the same time, this is life. You have to live it to the best of your ability. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And not just survive, but enjoy life. Do you get what I'm saying? That's how I look at things.